What's going on? This is Yancey, author and producer of the This Is Why series. Make sure you go now and subscribe to my website, www.newfacemanagement.org. This is why you go to college. New Face Entertainment. New Face Family. Hmm? New Face Family. This is why you go to college. New Face, New Face, New Face Entertainment. <laughs> New Face Entertainment. This is why you go to college. New Face Entertainment. <laughs> This is why you go to college. This is why you go to college. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my boy. My man's in him. My dude, Mr. DJ Tay James. What's up, world? It's Sweat. I'm joking now. It's DJ Tay James, aka we know the DJ. I'm here with my boy Yancey. Number. My number. Here yeah. we go. What's going on? All right, cool. So let them know where you're from, where you live now. From Baltimore. Um, went to Hampton University, graduated in 2009. Now we're in Los Angeles. Thank you for coming out this way, bro. Yeah, man. I had to make the trip. Had to make the trip. What made you want to come to Hampton and just talk about your, your beginning DJing experiences before um, Hampton? Like, what, what age did you get started and why? Uh, well, honestly, I wanted to go to Howard and... They, they didn't even send me like a, a letter saying that I didn't get accepted at all. Like they, they played me pretty bad. They hey. told my dad over the phone. So I was just like, you know, let me just go down to Hampton and see what Hampton's hit me for. Right. I go down there for the uh, open house. Um, first thing I uh, first thing I noticed was just like the environment. Like it was, it was like welcoming. Like it was really nothing that I was used to. I, I, I went I was I went to like a predominantly white private school. And you know what I mean? Like I wanted to go to you know, I wanted to go to a you know HBCU. So went to Hampton, didn't know anything about the school, and then I fell in love with it right when I, I got there. And the only and the, real, the first thing I noticed was the DJing. It was like it was they had two DJs on campus and they were just you know man, and that's all I cared about at the time, like senior year in high school was DJing and mixing and trying to be the best, trying to go to this party, trying to get this record, club music, just doing everything I can. So when I saw that, I was like, all right, cool, well, I can come down here. You know what I mean? I figured I could come down here with a mixtape and then do my thing, because I had I didn't see any mixtapes. And that was like a big thing in Baltimore was mixtapes. I didn't see not one. So I was like, you know what? I got a plan, I'm gonna come down to Hampton. All right. So that's and then I found out about um, at the time I was I was interning at a, uh, at a record label in Baltimore and, and they worked with a DTLR, you know, downtown locker room. Right. So they were opening stores in Virginia in seven cities. So it was just like, it just made more and more sense for me to go down there because it's, okay, cool, I can go down there and I can work and go to school. I can DJ and create a name for myself. So it was like a combination. Like it all like kind of lined up perfectly, bro. Right, and when, when did you start DJing? I uh, started at 12, but professionally like around like 16, 17. Okay, all right, cool. So uh, once you got to Hampton, uh, I said, yes, so about your experience meeting me and you know, this is a funny story. I went to a new face party and I paid to get in. I did all of that. It's like my freshman year. And it was like, a y'all had a pool party, but there was no pool. <laughs> and that was like the funniest thing to me as if I was like, yo, how y'all gonna throw a pool party? But there's no pool here. Like it's not even a, it's not even one. Like, not even. You got to reschedule. It was like a reschedule. It was like a reschedule. Yeah, like a reschedule. Yeah. So like something right. happened. I don't know if it rained or something like that, but y'all yeah. y'all threw it inside at the YMCA. Right. A lot of people still, everybody still came out. I know you yeah. made some money that night. We had a good time. You know what I'm saying? We can go from there. I remember going to the new face meeting and um, it was really family oriented. It was just like start. It was at the it was at the student city. You know, I mean, student center like activities from upstairs. Yeah. Like, or whatever. You just ran them out. Yeah. Or S and T. Yeah. Yeah. And we, and we went there. And it was just, it was more like you just get to learn everybody, meet everyone. And, and then from there, you just you become part of the family. You know what I mean? Went to your house for for Sunday dinner. That shit was cool. Yeah. Mac and cheese. You know, what's it called again? The, uh, what do we have? Fed cheese, fed, the Alfredo. Yeah, the Alfredo and the mac and cheese was your thing. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, man. Yeah. You know, just hang out. And then from there, you get down to the business, working, coming up with ideas, working with you, trying to figure out new ways to keep things cool on campus. You know what I mean? That's, that's, just, that's part of it, marketing yourself. I, yeah, I came with a mixtape and then I just remember telling you the idea. You're just like, we gotta get more of these. And I'm like, yeah. It's, right. Let's flood, let's flood the campus. And how, just, so, just uh, explain to them, um, like, just the planning 
that went into the whole mixtape idea because now people do things like you know just download download my mixtape on iTunes and stuff like that. But back then we, we had, had to travel. Yeah, we so traveled. Talk, we talk we about would, that. Yeah, we would travel. We would, well, fun. First, we'll record the mixtape in your house. Boogie had everything set up, and then from there, like we have to go somewhere. We have to print up the CDs, and you know before people would just print up a bunch of CDs at their house. Now like we had to go to a CD like printer. We had to go to my guy in Baltimore. We had to drive three hours up from Virginia. Right. Pay him. Out. I mean, we were paying him thousands of dollars at the time. Five thousand. Give out free mixtapes. Yeah, five thousand, ten thousand CDs, like free mixtapes, and, and you know, I mean, yeah, we buy a ticket to a party, you get a free mixtape, and mixtapes are huge. This is before like you know Apple Music, this is before any streaming, like where music wasn't really that easy to get unless you got it on a CD. Like mm -hmm. it, was, it wasn't on YouTube. Like you know what I mean? Like stuff wasn't really out like that. So. That was the best way to distribute music, and that's what we had our we had our hands on. It, was that in the radio, and Baby Drew was on the radio. Right. So yeah. it worked out. All right. So um, going into your senior year, um, you had to make a decision of what you wanted to do as far as graduating. How uh, how did you end up? Well, even like, bro, I mean, even if you really want to get down as far as DJing for New Face, like the parties I was DJing helped me succeed later in life because, you know, Hampton was a melting pot of communities and cultures and people from the West Coast, from the East Coast, from the South, from up North, even had people from, you know, out the country come in to come to, come to that school. So we had to cater to so many different genres of music. Like, people don't remember we had West Coast sets. Mm -hmm. We had the East Coast set. We had the Down South set, like, Be More set. Like, we had the go -go Be More set. set, Go Go set. Like, we had, there was, like, the parties were broken up into sets and, like, but I remember by the time I got down, I got to Hampton, I mean, by the time I started DJing in D.C., it was just like, I, my music was so, like, I already knew where every college campus was playing. Right. And so, when I get to D.C., it's like, it's more of a melting pot. So now you got, we got people from D.C., you got people from Maryland coming the down. DJs weren't even doing that. Now you got people from New York coming down, you got people from Baltimore, you got everyone from around the world coming down to this club in D.C., and now I know the music that's hot everywhere. Right. And then, and, and, and like the world, in the world view, when I first started getting with, with Justin, I was already prepared to use the mic. I was already prepared, you know, the, to engage with the crowd because I've had experience. Yeah. Because I never would talk on the mic until I got... What do you, what do you think... <laughs> new Face. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think um, New Face did as far as being able to give you that, um, that experience and income? How, how did it help you while you were in college? Man, well, I didn't have to get a nine to five. But, you know what I mean? I'll say that much. I, I was able to take care of myself. You know what I mean? Go out, have fun, buy clothes, pay for books. You know, pay my cell phone bill. Like just take pay rent. You know what I mean? Honestly, I was able to take care of that. You know, first I was making a couple hundred dollars. You were able to give me my first raise, and then from there, bro, you just hustle from there as a DJ. You start making me and other people. And then instead of me just DJing at New Face parties, I'm DJing here. I'm DJing at this campus. I mean. Norfolk, I'm in Virginia right. Beach. You know what I mean? Like I'm DJing at clubs in Virginia Beach. You know, what I mean? yeah. doing all of that. So uh, that all comes from just you know hustling and just giving, you know, giving that platform that you helped me start off with. Right. So just uh, explain, you know, what what blending is and well, one of the, by far one of the coolest DJs is Reggie Reg. People mm -hmm. people are people don't give Reggie Reg his credit for being one, one like probably one of the top tier DJs at Hampton. He did his thing, mm -hmm. and, he, and he was good. And we interviewed Reggie last month. Like personality wise, probably one of the coolest <laughs> guys, and always down to earth, always willing to help, show show you how to do something. You know what I mean? If you needed something, he was never really. You know what I mean? I never really seen him get upset about anything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Reggie was the guy. I like Reggie, and um, me honestly, me and him were just like we would encourage each other at, when I was younger to be, to be better. Like we would, like we would practice together. You know? mm -hmm. Boogie was just all about the business with you. Boogie didn't really care. Boogie still don't really care. He just don't care. He's a boy. Boogie's, Boogie's, yeah, Boogie. Boogie's the reason why I got to be with Jock. And he, he put me on. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's all this comes from us, just watching out for each other and, and the, you know, from back in the day and just helping each other out, you know? Mm -hmm. That's all it was. Right. Marvelous. Marvelous, too. Marvelous came out and came around a little later, though. Yeah. But he was always a DJ, though. Mm -hmm. but I don't he, he jumped on the team a little bit later. Yeah. But um, he, he made his he made his stance. He was real big with the reggae. Mm -hmm. That was like a, he was like a little reggae DJ. And he's the the cookout. Yeah. Really, everyone there, everyone's doing something still. Mm -hmm. I think every, everybody's still DJing right now. And since Sean just respectfully retired, but yeah, everybody's doing everybody's still DJing. 
I feel like it's, you know, so essential with DJing. Um, it's definitely like the body of the party or the body of your mix. And it's, you know, it's, that really defines how good you are as a DJ. Blending and timing. I think timing is really uh, very important. Like you could play a song and if your timing is slightly off, it wouldn't make sense, but if it's on point, it makes the party even better. So I always try to, I learn, I learn timing more so at Hampton. Because you had to play so many songs at different times to make sure you catch the crowd at the right time, cut it off at this point so people can sing, and then drop another record in. Right. Like I learned that's and then and what I brought to him that I remember was my I remember blending was huge. I remember I started doing like this wild, you know, Katy Perry over Soldier Boy. This mm -hmm. stuff, this different stuff that people wasn't it wasn't hearing and it worked at Hampton. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like. That was like, I try to just, you know, I try to have shock value with my blends. I just try to just do this wild, incredible shit and it worked out. Sometimes it sounded stupid, sometimes it worked out. You know what I mean? This is trial and error. All right, let's talk about um, just your experience with the 12 to 2 in the Student Center. Oh, I got the, um, I got to give you that record, uh, the, you know, the Nuck If You Buck. Mm -hmm. We represent 4 to mm -hmm. be, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's 12 to 2, Hampton. Let's define 12 to 2, Hampton. To Hampton, yeah. nothing you buck. Nothing you buck is the yeah. Hampton. That's like the Hampton song. Swag surf, swag yeah. surf for sure. Yeah. But nothing you buck was the original. Nothing you buck was the original. They created a lot of people don't realize <laughs> that. Nothing like, buck was so crazy. Like that twelve to two has a lot of history in Hampton. You know what I'm saying? And and, and it's gone now, right? Nah, they, they, it was gone for like a year, and they just brought it back. So they 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 got they they have it now. Um, Who's DJ? But you know, certain certain administrators. Wanted to say that they were the ones that created the 12 2 when Newface created 12 2 back in 2002, like around Hurricane Isabel. And then from there, really? Yeah. Like we, um, we went back when we had the contract with the Student Union Board. Mm -hmm. That was one of the things that we implemented because the Student was, Union was new. Yeah, I mean, even the community work, bro. Even waking up early and, and giving back to the kids, bro. That was yeah. just some stuff that we used to do back in the day. Yeah, success without limitation. Mm -hmm. Remember that SWL? Well. SWO well, and it's still active now. I remember we started DJing over OU too. That yeah. right, was fun. Yeah, OU was cool. But yeah, man, so uh, high school students, um, I just want you to send a message out to uh, those high school students and anybody who may be thinking about going to college, going away to college, or going to a black college. What would you say to that uh, high school kid that's contemplating going to school? What would you want to tell them? I mean, honestly, school, besides just the education, is you, you learn so much with just meeting people and learning how to, yeah, what's it called again, network. And that's half the business once you get out in the real world, is just knowing the right people and being able to put yourself in the right position to help, you know, make your, uh, what's it called again, um, what's the word I'm looking for? This is basically just to make your situation better, it's all about who you know. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've noticed. It's not like, right now in LA, yes, I have, yes, you know, I'm connected to this person, I'm connected to that person. Yes, I can DJ, but it's also, who I know which helps me get the gigs I have now. Mm -hmm. And it's not even, it's, yeah, my talent is good too, but me being a good person, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Me being loyal, me being respectful, that also, that also goes a long way and I learned that at Hampton University. And even some of the friends I have now, my fraternity, my line, like, these, you know, my, my line be out here, you know what I'm saying? Like, your right. lines, like, we're all spread apart and mm -hmm. we all work together still to this day, like minded individuals, and you don't really, you can learn that in the, in the real world, but it's easier to connect with people in college. Cool, honestly. All right, and um, I'm not sure if you've been in this situation before, but um, a lot of people have a situation where you know you're in college and you're thinking about dropping out. Well, whether you know for a number of different reasons, you know this. this is, right. So let's just talk about you know if, if a student's in that situation, what message do you have to them to keep them this to keep pushing in? You know, keep going. Focus on the long, the long-term goal. Like a lot of people go to college and they drop out because they they're, they're worried about the now. You gotta worry about the future. You gotta worry about what's gonna happen at forty. You know what I mean? A lot of people are, oh, I'm nineteen. I'm a teenager. This is fun now, but yeah, ten years is not gonna be fun. Mm -hmm. You're gonna wish you uh, met some people. You're gonna wish you had like some type of network that you created. But if you don't have that, then you might be stuck. You might be lost. But just look at the bigger picture. If it's something that you can grind out, grind out. Use the tools and the resources at the school to help you to help you pass. There's nothing. You know, I mean, nowadays there's nothing. There's nobody that uh, that you know. I mean, that can't use the resources given to us now 
to help you know succeed. And I know at school they definitely all the tutors in the world. You can ask the pretty girl that's sitting next to you in class, mm-hmm. ask her to tutor you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like meet somebody brand new. Like that's what I did. <laughs> yeah. that's, I, that's what I did. We become cool with everybody and gave them a mixtape. That's how, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, the mixtape. You definitely have to just you know you got to promote yourself. You got to market yourself. You got to be yourself. So that's that's my advice. Cool. All right, well, I guess that concludes the official part of the interview. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We're good again. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>